Hello, everyone out there that loves the essential oils. We call ourselves oil junkies. Anyway, this is Lisa Roth. Uh, this is the third um, recording I'm doing on teaching about the therapeutic use of essential oils. Today's video is about mood elevation, uh, combating depression, staying happy, staying optimistic, uh, having power over our emotions. So we're going to call the video today the oils of emotions and how the oils help us with our emotions. Sometimes our emotions do things we really don't want them to do. So the oils can be used to help us with that. As I stated on my other videos, I'm a certified herbalist and aromatherapist and I do counsel people with their health and include wonderful foods with that. I just finished making my own um, deep water fish dip and cooked my garbanzo beans and made homemade hummus, all organic. So I'm all about being very healthy. And the benefits of that are that no meds, feel wonderful, have tons of energy at my age, and I'm real excited about life. So let's go forward with the oils. On the first video, it was all about the beginner's dozen. The second video was about the antiviral, antibacterial essential oils. And as I said, today we're going to talk about the oils for our emotions, to prevent depression, to keep us focused on an exciting future and understanding and accepting the wonderfulness of life and how the oils can help with that. It's very interesting. Um, TDA Lingo was with General Patton in World War II, and he couldn't understand why some people were all about love and peace and kindness, and then there's this other group of people that are all about war and drama and killing. So when he left the war, he did 15 years study, and during that period of time found out that in the limbic part of the brain, there is the amygdala gland. It only responds to smell or fragrance. In the posterior position of the amygdala gland, we are going to be thinking about trauma drama. But if we can breathe something that allows it to shift, which can be in the middle of a forest, breathing the forest air, breathing the ocean air, smelling a flower, smelling a food, of being prepared that we really love, that will shift the energy from the posterior part of the amygdala gland to the anterior part. The anterior part is all about feeling good, having peace, being happy. So the essential oils are absolutely the very best thing we can pull out of our purse, pull off of our medicine cabinet, carry with us, and have to breathe to be able to go through the olfactory to the limbic part of the brain and shift us to the anterior position of the amygdala where we have peace, happiness, a feeling of joy, no stress, and the oils really can do that. So the first oil that I'm going to talk about today, and remember sometimes there will be a repeat on the oils because they can fall into many different categories, but we're gonna start out today with bergamot. Bergamot is an Italian orange. It is the, um, oil that's used in Earl Grey tea, and it has a lot of benefits that the other citruses do, but actually a little more emotional. So when we look at our book, which I have shown you in our previous videos, the Reference Guide for Essential Oils by Connie and Alan Higley, it's available on my website, lisasherbsandoils.com. We're going to turn to the page of bergamot. The first thing I think about with bergamot is that it turns grief into joy. So if you're someone that has dealing with sadness right now, something has happened in your life that has caused you to grieve, bergamot will release that grieving into joy. It doesn't mean that you stop grieving, you elevate it to the level of understanding the passing, that that's part of life. Let's see what else there is about bergamot, especially in reference to emotionality. We have it being used for um, when you feel agitated, 
depressed, um, very wonderful to use for a lot of physical aspects as well, but especially good for anxiety. It will regulate your appetite, and it does work with uh, when breathing it with aromatherapy, breathing the oil in, holding the oil under your nose. It will relieve anxiety, depression, stress, tension. It's uplifting. It is refreshing. It opens the heart chakra. So that means we're, we'll, we can love easier. We can receive love easier. And it radiates love energy. So bergamot is a splendid, splendid oil for us to start out with, with our emotional oils. Our second oil today is going to be clary sage. Clary sage actually will um, cause you to feel really euphoric. And it's normally known as a hormone balancing oil, which we'll get into when we do our feminine uh, essential oils. But clary sage is especially, especially good for feeling balanced and uplifted. It can actually enhance the dream state. So day dreaming, dreaming and being creative or actually enhancing your nighttime dreams, which can also bring answers to us. As I said, brings about a feeling of euphoria and very balancing for the hormones, which uh, is extremely good for we women, for us women. Um, but it does have some applications with men as well. Nothing smells like clary sage. It has, uh, if you have your bottle there, breathe it. It, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very, very interesting. I like it in a light application um, where it's not too heavy. It's very wonderful in massage oil. And uh, that is a wonderful one to work with PMS, um, cramping with periods, putting it on the inside and the outside of your ankles. Um, very good for uh, the female hormonal imbalances. The next oil we're going to go to today for our emotionality is fennel. Fennel is normally known as something that really helps with digestion. You can put a drop on your tummy for indigestion. It's also in the blends that are used for, again, balancing of the hormones. So fennel and clary sage together are very good for that. It is, uh, increases your longevity of life, gives you courage, very purifying. It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. And it is, um, Give the ancient people historically used it to bestow strength, courage, longevity. It's been used for thousands of years for the, repro the female reproductive system, uh, kidney and lungs, uh, hormonal issues, as I mentioned before. And it breaks up blockages in the body so that fluids can continue to move, which we all want for our health. We want the chi to always be moving, the lymph to be moving, the blood to be moving. Um, and it increases lactation. So some of these have some very interesting aspects to them. Uh, supports the liver, like I said, helps with the uh, digestion so much. And it is very uh, cleansing to the tissues. Ginger. Ginger is not an oil that I sell very many of because most people will just grab ginger root and make a tea because ginger is so easily available. But I always think of ginger for physical balance, keeping your balance uh, in reference to even seasickness, uh, nauseousness, headache. Again, ginger keeps everything moving in the body. Very, very, very wonderful uh, for the blood to not be in a thick form. So ginger aromatically uh, increases physical energy, sex, love, money, 
and courage. It is uh, used uh, by French medical doctors in the prevention of contagious diseases. Uh, it's been used for alcoholism, broken bones even. Um, it is historically been known always for the digestive system. And they even stated that they made gingerbread as long ago as 4,000 years ago in Greece. The Egyptians used it to ward off epidemics and the Romans used it for its aphrodisiacal powers. Again, it's one that if I was using it for a blend that I wanted to wear that would make me feel good and make me feel happy, I wouldn't do it as a single. I would blend it with uh, patchouli and orange. It it's, tends to bring a real earthy uh, smell into what you're breathing. Our next oil is going to be grapefruit. You know, I have to say all the citruses bring on happiness and elation. Grapefruit, as we know, is an appetite suppressant. Grapefruit has a very clean smell. I don't even particularly care to eat grapefruit. I really love almost everything. Grapefruit and buckwheat are my two things that I'm not crazy about, but I love to smell grapefruit oil. I love to wear grapefruit oil. And grapefruit, it's got a great description here for our attitude and our emotions. It helps prevent one from drowning in his or her own negativity. It's balancing, uplifting to the mind, and relieves anxiety. Grapefruit is also very good for jet lag, any kind of eating disorder, um, hangovers, migraine headaches, PMS, very cleansing with the kidneys and the, lymph the lymphatic. As I said, an appetite suppressant, indigestion, very effective in weight loss. But it's just a happy smelling oil and a very fresh, clean smelling oil. Our next oil that we're going to go to for our emotion, emotions that we're thinking about is jasmine. Now we're getting into the big players. The flowers, very, very emotionally releasing. And jasmine is fascinating to smell, exotic, blooms at nighttime. And I would love to read this to you about jasmine because it also illustrates how strong the liquid of the essential oils are. For instance, sometimes people will say, well, if I take jasmine petals and rub them on my skin, will that be the same as using jasmine oil? Mm -mm, because the essential oils are so concentrated. That's why we only use one to two drops at a time, or we just breathe it. So this is a very interesting uh, piece of literature here in reference to the jasmine blossoms. But remember, this, is, this would include any essential oil that is prepared, whether it comes from bark or leaves or roots. We're, we're talking about flower petals, but we're talking about huge amounts of material to create this concentrated essential oil that we use. One pound of jasmine oil requires a thousand pounds of jasmine or 3.6 million fresh picked blossoms. The blossoms must be collected before sunrise or much of the fragrance has left. The quality of the blossoms can also be compromised if they're squashed. A single one pound can of pure jasmine oil can cost between $1,200 and $4,500. In contrast, Synthetic jasmine oils can be obtained for $3.50 a pound. You see why the world went synthetic? Because the petroleum industry allowed things to be cheap. And many of us were caught up in that, and many, many are still caught up in that. And as I've mentioned before, I don't really bash other companies, but I am really hard on using Fabrice, renews it plug-ins, Glade, because they're all synthetic. There are many, many, many litigations going on and allergies being created and asthmatic conditions because of breathing synthetics. So please don't breathe synthetics. You need to use things that are botanical, that come from plants. So finishing this little article, they are just mentioning pretty much what I said 
a fragrance oil or a potpourri oil is usually a synthetic. An essential oil is the immune properties that has been expressed from the plants, usually in a distiller with the least amount of pressure and the least amount of heat. They're in water. The essential oil floats to the top. That's why they called it an essential oil. It's truly not an oil. It's not oily at all. When you put it on your skin or a piece of paper, there is no oil. But that's the name it got. So it's because it did float uh, as a lipid at the top of that water in the distiller. So I just wanted to read this to let you know it takes 1,000 pounds of blossoms or 3.6 million fresh picked blossoms to create a pound of jasmine oil. What are the qualities of jasmine? Jasmine is awesome for relationships. Whether it be relationship with yourself, relationship with friends, your boss, your employees, your lover, your friends, it's very conducive to helping relationships. Jasmine is extremely effective as an antidepressant, very uplifting to the emotions, helps to increase intuitive powers and wisdom. It's a powerful, inspirational, uh, gives inspiration, and again, like I said, especially for relationships. It will also increase our feelings of attractiveness. It produces a feeling of confidence, energy, euphoria, optimism, reduces anxiety, apathy, depression, indifference, listless, listlessness, and relationship dilemmas. Also, on the physical level, it helps with mucus, um, sexual issues such as frigidity, impotence, uh, works with hepatitis, helps with hepatitis, helps with menstrual pain and menstrual issues, respiratory. It's con definitely considered an aphrodisiac. I like to blend it with neroli, orange, make a spray out of it. Just breathing it out of the bottle, though, is intense and absolutely delicious and beautiful. Uh, basically, historically, known in India as the queen of the night and moonlight of the grove, women have treasured it for centuries for its beautiful aphrodisiac-like fragrance. So jasmine is definitely one that I, it's an expensive oil, therefore I have started to procure it um, from my jobbers where I get my oils in jojoba oil. So I have the 3% dilution in jojoba oil, which allows it to be really affordable, still a very powerful, wonderful fragrance. What we got going on after jasmine? Uh, lavender. We've covered lavender, and we'll probably cover lavender in every video. It is the most universal essential oil you can use. Lavender calms the autonomic nervous system. It creates a peace-like feeling. I'm not even crazy about the smell of lavender, but remember, you can always put it on the bottom of your feet when you don't want to smell like lavender, or you really don't even care to put it and breathe it through your nostrils. Lavender is renowned for calmness. Awesome to put one drop in a couple tablespoons of, an, uh, of a uh, carrier oil, like coconut oil or jojoba oil, and that quantity, a couple tablespoons with one drop of lavender for a little baby, will last many, many, many applications because you use such a small amount. Rub it on their feet. Extremely calming and, and safe, giving the feeling of safety. Let's see what else is in here about lavender. There's always so much uh, that lavender does that it's overwhelming. But it's uh, very good for ADD and ADHD, alertness, um, concentration. Uh, it's even good for things like Parkinson's disease because that, again, it supports the nervous system, stress, tension. And as we continue to look here, uh, it's good to help with hysteria. You're sort of out of control. Um, pineal gland, which is the master gland. And it just promotes a feeling of consciousness, health, love, peace, and a real great feeling of well-being. 
Now, after lavender, lemon. Here we are with another citrus. Very uplifting, very sunshiny, very bright, very purifying. And lemon is one that causes uh, us to be happier. Again, you can mix the citruses together. You can use it singularly. Um, it improves clarity of thought. Very good for memory. Very good for strengthening your fingernails. It promotes health, healing, physical energy, purification, and its fragrance is invigorating, enhancing, and warming. And as I've said before, I clean my house with lemon oil, and that's what the hospitals in Europe, a lot of them use. They have no staff strep or MRSA. Lemon is very uplifting. You can put a drop in your glass of water for pH, alkalizing. Uh, it's a clean... Um, non-heavy smell for those of you that like something very light and fresh. Now we're going to go to mandarin orange again, another uh, citrus. Mandarin orange is renowned for happiness, for you uh, allow you to feel happy. I think mandarin orange sort of has a exotic, um, more of an earthy smell to it than the other citruses. It's very Asian. Um, it puts a nice twist into a blend that you would wish to make, or it's definitely a very unique citrus-smelling type of an oil. It's appeasing, gentle, promotes happiness, refreshing, uplifting, revitalizing. And because of its, of its sedative and slightly hip, hypnotic properties, very good for stress and irritability. Mandarin is also great to help with digestion, skin issues, restlessness. It's very good to breathe and put on as a, when you're a restless, irritated energy. It's very uh, well tolerated by children and pregnant women, and um, that's something that this book will make very clear to you. What are the contraindications? What can pregnant women use? What can we use on children? There is more information that you can gather on working with pets and animals. So mandarin is, uh, um, it was a, the fruit that originated from a group of imperial Chinese officials called the mandarins. And it was a traditional gift given to these officials. After mandarin orange, we have regular orange or sweet orange, and definitely a different smell. And if you have yours there, enjoy the fragrance of its smell. So we have orange. Orange is brings peace, happiness to the mind and the body, and joy to the heart which provides emotional support to help one overcome depression. It is good for your bones, dull complexion. It's good when you wish to sedate yourself. It helps lower high cholesterol. It is good for wrinkles, great for insomnia. And again, it is happy. Orange is one that creates happiness. And now we come to the last one in our group today, tangerine, another citrus. Tangerine creates such happiness that sometimes when I'm doing classes, people get very giddy. They're smelling the tangerine, they start giggling, and everything becomes really funny. And uh, I was doing it for social work group once to help them be able to handle their cases, which are depressing and upsetting at times for them. And they apologized to me that they were giggling so much. And I said, that's good for you. That's good therapy to laugh. We want to laugh. We want to enjoy life and not take things so seriously. Tangerine is what I diffuse. And I'm going to show you the diffuser in just a minute. But I just want to talk to you a little bit about tangerine. The citruses are cold pressed from the rind. So we want those to definitely be organic. And uh, since it's not a steam distillation on citruses, it's a pressing of the peels. So tangerine, as I said, this was one of my um, 
beginner's dozen is tangerine. I think it's one of the most one of the most important ones to have. Anti-inflammatory, anticoagulant. It's a sedative. It helps dissolve cellulite as all the citruses do. It uh, contains esters and aldehydes, which are sedating and calming to the nervous system. And when you diffuse tangerine with marjoram, it can soothe emotions such as grief, anger, and shock. It's good for tired and aching limbs, good for sadness, stress, digestive system. And I had a mother bring her son to me. I think he was about nine, pretty um, hyperactive. And I thought lavender would be the best oil for him. And so we worked with him with breathing different oils, but tangerine was the oil for him. He started giggling and calmed down and started being loving to his mom, and she was absolutely thrilled. Because when you breathe these oils in through the olfactory part of your nose into the limbic system, and it goes to the amygdala gland, it shifts your energy from the posterior position of trauma drama to the anterior position of love and peace. So that's how the oils work as an aromatherapy. An aromatherapy way would be the fastest way when you are working with depression, frustration, negative energy, breathing the oil right out of the bottle or putting a drop on the end of your nose, putting it on your temples, your brain stem right where your back of your skull connects with your neck. You can put it on your throat. You can put it on your pulse points, especially if you love to smell it. And again, as I said before, if you don't like to breathe it, put it on the bottom of your feet. Let the lymph and the blood carry it throughout the whole body in 20 minutes. And that's our session today for oils that raise your emotional level to happiness and peace. I'm going to come back in just a few minutes and show you the diffuser that I love to use. And my favorite oil for the diffuser is tangerine, and everyone loves it. So I'll be right back.